Today, we're going to learn regex, a useful skill to have in our toolkit so that we can quickly validate, analyze, and manipulate data or understand filters with flaws that we might be trying to bypass. So first up, we'll talk briefly about what regex is, walk through some basic syntax and scenarios, and then take a hands-on look at the most common things you'll encounter to achieve a working knowledge of regex. Join a community of aspiring cybersecurity experts at TCM Security Certifications. With a curriculum designed for all skill levels, our certifications provide comprehensive learning and unmatched support. From extensive lab exercises to dedicated mentors, we're here to help you succeed. Start your journey at certifications.tcm-sec.com and become part of the security elite. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So what is regex? At its core, regular expressions are patterns used to match character combinations in strings. Think of it as a powerful search tool, but instead of searching for a specific word, you can search for patterns like an email address, IP address, or any sequence that fits a particular format. And why is this important in cybersecurity and pen testing? Well, we use regex for a number of tasks like data extraction, so we can easily pull out useful information from large text files like logs or config files. It's also used for input validation, ensuring that user inputs match expected patterns to prevent things like injection attacks. And finally, automation. We can streamline tasks in scripts and tools like grep and sed and all of the major programming languages so that we can pass data and automate tasks efficiently. So let's take a closer look. All right, so here we are at my machine and I've already gone and browsed to regexa.com and also regex101.com is pretty good. There are a bunch of good websites for learning and testing regex. And first things first is I want to set a couple of flags and fortunately my face is kind of in the way. But if we come over here and come to flags, you can see that we have the global flag and I'm also going to switch on the case insensitive flag and the multi-line flag. And we'll talk more about these in a few minutes, but they're quite useful. And you can see that they've actually changed our expression. So global search uh, retains the index of the last match, allowing for iterative searches. And then we have ignore case. So every Everything is going to be in lowercase when we're doing our searching and we have multi lines so beginning and end anchors will match the start and end of a line and actually I'm going to turn off case insensitive. So first up what we want to do is some basic matching so if we type something like cat you can see that we get a match here on cat and I'll make the text a little bit bigger for you. And you can see that this is case sensitive at the moment. So if we come back to the flags and switch on the case insensitive, you can see that we actually get multiple matches. So we have the cat with the capitals C and then the cat with the lowercase C. And what's good about this tool as well is we have this explain option down here. So you can roll over the different elements to highlight what's going on and what's being matched and why. So that's not actually useful. We can just, you know, Control F usually and search and get like full string matches. But what if we wanted to do something where, for example, I wanted my string to start with a C and end with a T, but I wanted to capture everything in between. And we can use this dot here. So this matches any character except for line breaks. So if we had a C at the end here and then an A, for example, and then a T at the end, it's not gonna match this string across the line break, which is quite handy. And you can see that we've got cats, cats, cots, and cuts all matched. And that's quite useful, but what if we wanted to match a, a dot as well? So what we can do is when we're using special characters like the dots, we can actually use a backslash and then put a dot. So we can escape this and you can see that we're matching the dots here. And maybe what we want to do is grab every character before a dot. And so here we're getting R dot, M dot, S dot, E dot, etc., etc. So just know that when you're using special characters in regex, you can escape them and then you can match them as normal characters. So next up, we have uh, some anchors. So for example, if we want to match things that are only at the start of a line, so if we have lots of rows of data 
and then we have uh, strings that repeat within the data we might only want to match the first one and so in this case again we're going to match cat here and everything we're doing lowercase anyway but if we just want this first one we can use an anchor like this so we use the i don't know what this this is this people call this a carrot or something i don't know it doesn't look like a carrot to me but whatever this little symbol is then we can use this and if we want to match the end of a line we can come to the end and we can add a dollar symbol so this matches the end string so you'll notice that we're matching this one instead of the one at the start instead so this can be pretty useful in a number of cases so next up we have uh, character classes and for example before we said we could match anything starting with the t ending with a t and a dot in the middle and uh, just by using the dot special character but what we could do is we could put in a character class and it's going to match any character within here so we could just do something like a to z or like for example zero to nine and this would match all characters in a range and once again it gives us a nice explanation as to what's going on down here and if we didn't have the case insensitive or the case ignore flag here we could also do the capital a to z but in this case, uh, I want to match cats and I want to match cots, but I don't want to match cuts. And so you can see here that we've got cat, cat, cots, and we're not matching cuts. And of course, we could add the U there if we wanted to. And then we can do the negative search of this as well. So for example, if we wanted to do a negative search for A and O, we could do this. And then again, this would match cot. Or for example, if we want to do the negative search of zero to nine, this matches all of them because none of them have zero to nine, etc., etc. So the negative search is quite useful as well. So now let's talk about quantifiers and using things like a asterisk or a plus or a question mark or braces allow us to match multiple times within a string. So for example, if we scroll down a little bit here, you'll see that I've got multiple strings where I've spelt Google or misspelt Google and you might have a ton of data or you might have a ton of logs and you actually need to account for spelling mistakes or or something like this or different variations of strings and first up what we can do is we can change one of these and we can say hey any number of the previous character so match zero or more of the preceding token and the preceding token is the o in google so this matches all of them now if we wanted to just get one with one for example and we wanted to make sure the o was there then we can use the plus so this matches one or more of the preceding tokens so the google that's misspelled here is not included but all of the others are included as well and interestingly depending on what country you're in so for example if you have the if you have the american spelling of color and the British spelling of color, you could do something like C-O-L-O-U-R and you can add the question mark in here behind the U and you can say, hey, match between zero and one of the preceding token and we're going to match both of these. So if you want to account for different spellings or misspellings of things, or you have an idea of how things are going to be varied, then you can use these quantifiers. Another useful one, going back to our Google example, is we can use these curly braces and we can say, hey, I only want to capture between two and three of O's. So the, once again, the match between two and three of the preceding token, or maybe between two and four of the preceding token, or maybe between three and four of the preceding token. And you can put a range in here, which is really, really useful. And we also have access to OR operations. So we can use uh, an OR. So if we group an expression, we can group expressions in these brackets or I'm not sure what other people call them, like parentheses or something. And we can do, for example, dog or cats. And if I scroll up a little bit, you can see that we're matching 
both dog or cat. So the alternation here acts like a Boolean or and matches the expression before or after the uh, pipe that we're using, which is super helpful. Now, we also have special sequences, and I think the special sequences are what throw a lot of people off when they start looking at regex, um, but they are really simple and really, really important. So the first one is matching word characters, which is just going to be backslash W. So this matches any letter, digit, or underscore. And so what we can do is we can say, hey, we want to grab everything that starts with C and then is followed by any digit, letter or underscore. And again, we can use our plus. So for example, if we want to grab a whole word and as long as there is some white space after it or a dot after it or uh, anything that's not a letter, digit or underscore, it will cut off. So we can capture whole words quite easily by using that start with C by using the backslash W. Now we can do the same for digits. So we can just use backslash D for digits. And if we scroll down, you'll see that here we've got a bunch of individually matched digits. And what we'd want to do in something like this, where we have a number of different orders is we might want to go A order and then once again, match those digits. But you'll see that one fails because we actually have two spaces here and it's expecting a digit here to match. So we have another um, special sequence and that is S, which matches white space. And of course I could put two in if I wanted to just match this order or I could use the plus. So matches one or more of the preceding tokens. So there has to be at least one white space or more of them. And then of course we're matching the digits afterwards. So this can be quite useful if your data is a little bit dirty or uh, has some variance in it and you need to match everything. Again, you can go in and use these special sequences to do that. And we can also use uh, negatives of these and the negatives are just the uppercase variants of them. So for example, if we wanted to um, match a the order failed here and we had a bunch of different things. So it could be order failed or it could be order X or something like this. But basically, if we don't want to match digits, oops, we can come in here and do capital D and you'll see that we get some interesting match here. So what we actually need to do is either change this to and and interestingly, you'll see that actually because we're doing the not digits, it's also capturing the line breaks and things like this. So we're not getting exactly what we wanted. And here, what we could do is do something like, hey, OK, we could do order failed. But if we had order tested, then in this case, what we might want to do is just do A to Z like this to the end of the line. So when you're testing regex, it's really, really important to have uh, different variations of data, because if this had just cut off at the bottom and we didn't have more rows, then we might have gone with a negative on the digit character special sequence. Nice, that was a good find that I was not expecting to come up. So that's always good to see. Now, finally, we want to have a look at the look ahead and also the look behind. So here we have a couple of email addresses and I want to grab the strings that come before this at symbol. And to do this, we can do the look ahead. So I want to match all word characters, A to Z, zero to nine and underscores. And I want to make sure that I get the multiples of these. And then I also want to make sure that it's followed by an at symbol. So here we can use this expression. So this is the positive look ahead and then we're matching on this at character. So pretty useful. But what if we want to get the domain here. So what we can do is we can do a look behind and once again we'll just do question but instead of just equals we'll do less than equals and then the at symbol once again and after this what I could do is I could do hey okay just capture all of the words after this but this doesn't account for every email address so I'm not sure exactly what the RFC says in terms of what are valid characters in email addresses something that somebody can go ahead and read and a 
lot of the time, this is why you probably don't want to write your own regex for things that are really, really complicated like this, but commonly used, you can go ahead and find like a standard regex for email addresses for passing them. But in this case here, yes, we, we're correctly grabbing the name of the domain, but here we're actually missing out the dash. So instead of doing this, probably what I'd do is if I needed to write it myself, I'd do something like A to Z, zero to nine. We want to include uh, dots and we want to include dashes. And, and of course, we want to do that multiple times. And that's basically everything you need to know to get started with regular expressions. And of course, they can get a little bit more complicated, but usually what you want to do is look out for the parentheses, so all the brackets, so that you can see where things are grouped together. And of course, once you know things like the special sequences and using the OR operators, you can easily figure out what's going on and then decide whether you need to test it further, tweak it more, or depending on what your use case is day to day, go a little bit deeper into regex. And there you have it, a lightning fast dive into into the world of regular expressions. Learning regex opens up a world of possibilities for data extraction, input validation, and so much more in our field of cybersecurity. And it's an easy one just to let go and never really come back to until you really have to. But if you start using it when you're doing things with grep, sed, and awk, or if you're writing scripts to do something, make sure to try it and keep using it. And then if you stick with it, you'll be able to pull it out of the bag or understand it on the fly during your next encounter. Once again, if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you haven't already, we have a Discord channel with around 60,000 members, all with the same goals and ambitions of working in the industry. And we live stream every Wednesday. So if you have questions about today's video, then drop into that and I will happily answer them live. Catch you next time.